so you like Star Wars. Really? <clears throat> that was the that was the whole intro. Hey guys, I'm about to by Kai. I'm Kai. I'm Kai. And today we're back once again taking a look at uh, recently. I had a couple of comments asked me uh, once again about doing more uh, text stuff in Blender. So some cool like. Uh, cool text effects, cool text works, you know, intro animations, whatever you want to call them, you know. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to do that today. I'm going to drag a box over top of everything in our scene, hit delete on that bad boy, and we're going to go ahead go ahead and hit shift A and search for text. Um, we won't do anything with this yet. I hit one on my numpad and then shift A and search for a camera and then hit G Y to move this camera backwards and hit zero to go into the camera's view. Now we're going to select our text and hit R x on the keyboard and nine zero on the numpad to rotate it on the x axis by 90 degrees and then left click to confirm that motion hit tab to go into edit mode and hit delete a couple of times to get rid of all of these letters we don't need now i'm going to type in a word here i'm going to type in um i'm going to type in i'm going to type in i'm going to type in uh 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 uh, uh, uh t we're just going to do tutorials we always do tutorial we're just going to do tutorial it's fine we'll go to the text uh, the text tab here hit font open this up and it's little this little uh this little folder icon and it's going to open up our folders our font folder um and what, you, what you'll see is uh, I'm gonna have to actually scroll on down to my uh, other font folder here, which is uh, right here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and pick a font. Uh, I'm gonna pick something that's kind of big, maybe kind of puffy, Ooh, maybe com, maybe comic-y like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. We'll just look like that. Um, and scroll on down here to alignment, and then change it from horizontal left to horizontal center, and then vertical. We'll change this to uh, to uh, to middle. Now, once that's done, we can go ahead and give it a little bit of extrusion value by scrolling back up to geometry and then changing the extrude value up a little bit. Nothing too crazy, just something like that, maybe. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, nice. Um, with that done, I think I don't want to do anything else to it. Uh, we're going to leave it exactly the way that it is. And we're going to go ahead and actually duplicate the rest of our letters here. So I'm, I'm going to hit zero to go back into the camera's view. And then I'm going to hit G to move that bad boy over there. Hit shift D. Du duplicate that hit tab and then we can just change all of these letters so shift d and then just oop that's not what i want to do we're going to just uh change all this uh tutorial um and then we're gonna have a nice little r here and then we're gonna have a little i hit g to move by the way g to move these objects around so hit g on your keyboard um i a and then one more for the l boom nice now we got all this done what i want to do is i'm going to go ahead and actually um, make sure we're going to just drag a box over top of all of them and make sure these are like in the exact spot that I want them, which is not there. we're going to move it over a little bit like that and maybe hit S to scale them down a little bit, something like that. There we go. Um, we'll move these around individually in a, in a second here, but I want to get down this down first. So let's go ahead. And now once you know that you, you, you have everything you, all the letters you want and all the, they say exactly what you want them to say, go ahead and hit shift D and then Y to move these letters back beyond the camera. Just so we have nice little duplicate copies in case we want to go ahead and change something in the future. Let's go ahead and select all, all of these and then hit object and then we're going to go convert. Actually, wait, we have to select one first. So hold on shift, select one of these object, convert mesh. Now when we go ahead and hit tab, you can see it doesn't bring us to the editor anymore. It doesn't, it, we can't change what it says. Now we have these, the vertices, so we can see all the vertices, which is exactly what we need. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit three on my numpad and then hit uh, tab to go into edit mode. Hit this little button up at the top here, which is the X-ray mode, and turn face select on up in the top left. And then just click and drag a box over top of everything here. Hit this little uh, hit this little button that you see right here with the material properties. And this little drop down, add the material, and then we can go ahead and uh, do the rest. Do this for the the rest of these. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold down Shift and select all of these letters here before we get started. And then go back to the L. So let, so hold down Shift and select the L last, and then hit Control L. And then uh, link materials. So now all of these objects have the same material on, which is exactly what we need. And then we're going to go, going to go ahead and hit this little plus icon, hit new, and then we can go ahead and do the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to hit assign with only these the the, the these edges in. So only these edges are selected that we have that we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit assign, and we'll change this color. And you can see when we change the color here, you can see that we have um, a different color on the edges. So that looks really, really cool. I'm going to change this to, um, for now, we'll just change it to a purple, I guess, or something like that. Nice. So we can do the same thing with all the rest of the letters here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go down, go ahead and hold down shift and select all these again, hit control L and it should add the purple. Yep. So now it has the purple material there as well. We'll just double click this and call this purple, all capitals. Cause why not? And then we'll call this white. 
and we'll just make that actually white. There we go. Nice. Cool. So once that's done, hit um, tab, turn on X-ray, and then just select all of these all these faces in the middle here. Select purple, hit assign, and then do the same thing with all the rest of the letters. So hit that one, hit three on the numpad, select all those in the middle, assign, and we'll just speed run this real quick. As you can see, um, super, super easy stuff. Three on the numpad, drag a box, go to purple, hit assign, same thing, tab, three, drag a box, purple, assign, and then with the last three letters here. I really, really, really love this effect because not only does it look cool, it, it, it gives a lot of difference between... Um, the, uh, the the sides of the letters and gives it a lot of depth. I really really like this because it's just so easy to do. And in my experience, the easier things are always the things that I enjoy most. I just think they look. I just think it looks really really good. And I like I like this uh, this tone quite a bit. Now these are not thick enough for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them and hit S uh, S Y to scale them on the Y axis like that. Make them a little thicker. You know what I mean? It's just some something, something like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is the um, is the lighting. So let's go ahead and hit Shift A and search for a light area. I'm gonna hit G Z to move this up like that, and then we'll hit S X to scale on the X axis, and then we'll rotate it a bit by hitting R uh, R X, rotate like that, and then R Y, sorry G Y, and move it uh, over like this, just so it's kind of bright on the on the edge there, and then just turn maybe the uh, the power up a bit, something like that. So now we have this, which looks really really good. I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and mess around with these letters real quick because they do not look good enough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push the camera forward. So with the camera selected, hit G and double tap Z, move it inwards a little bit. And then we're going to turn, we're going to pull the perspective out just so it gets a little distorted. Um, so I want to go maybe to 11 and then we'll do something like this. And then we can go ahead and take these letters here and we can kind of move them around in a way that we really want them to be. So double tap R to rotate like this, you know what I mean? And we can have some crazy stuff. Like this, um, like this, and then maybe have that one go down, this one go like inwards, yeah, 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 okay, and then the L can be there maybe and pull it up a little bit, no, I don't like that, okay, we'll just do that instead, that's nice, okay, I do want them to also have like their own distinct shape so all right Things like that a little rotation never hurt anybody you know okay i like that a lot it looks really cool um now with that done i want to go ahead and and make sure we have this looking even better by going to the main tab here and then just uh, maybe turning on a couple of things like we can turn on ambient occlusion and hit this little distance and change this like 10 or something and that makes a nice little difference on all of the issues, all the uh, pieces where they're kind of touching. So you see in here, this little darker, deeper shadow is the ambient occlusion working there. And then right here as well, in between the R and the I, it looks just a lot better. And in between the little pieces of the R here, you can see the same thing. It's just a little darker in there. It looks more realistic, which I like quite a bit. So we can turn on screen, screen space reflections as well, but we don't really have anything else in the scene right now, unless we're going to go ahead and make the purple color super reflective by turning up the specular and turning the roughness down. Um, you can see that you can see that uh, if we turn the, up the metallic a little bit as well, you can see we have a little bit of um, that subsurf coming through. If I go ahead and toggle it on and off, there you go. So we have a little bit of that coming through of the uh, reflections of things, which looks, looks it just looks really really good. Um, so I definitely would recommend um, trying trying it out and, and and just giving it a giving it a little feel, a little feel. See if you like it better shiny, if you like it better not shiny. You know some. Some uh, look better than others, but I, I really do enjoy the way this looks a lot. Let's go ahead and give this a nice, a nice teal. Yeah, sure. Nice little teal color. Nice. And with that done, we can go ahead and hit Shift A and search for a plane. And then hit RX90. Hit GY to move back. And then just hit S to scale this bad boy up. Now, I don't want this to be anywhere near the text. So I'm going to hit GY again, move it back even further. And then just hit S to scale it up a little bit like that. Um... But there we go. So yeah, that's uh, that's that. That's a nice little background. But I want to go ahead and take us a step further by hitting Shift A and searching for a point lamp. Hitting G Y, move it back closer to the plane, and then just hitting uh, turn the turn the power up like a lot, like that. There we go. Yeah, it looks nice, like angelic or something. Nice. So we get the power lamp on three thousand. I'm turning shadow off. Turn shadow off. And now uh, with this, I want to go ahead and duplicate this lamp that we have up here. 
above the word tutorial. If things get too big like this and you can't seem to zoom in precisely, select the object you want to zoom into and hit period on your numpad and it'll zoom into it and make the, the origin of that the origin of the scene, which is nice. So like you can see this um oh so you can see when we when I snap over like if I snap over here, if I hit period, it just instantly snaps this little origin to the center of my screen, which is really, really nice. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and sh shift, hit Shift D, and then hit uh, Z to move this straight on down, and then R X to move this in this direction, and then G Y to move it back there. Nice. So we have a nice little um, underneath light as well, which is like an ambient light. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually change the color of this to a nice like tealish color, and then the one on the top will do maybe a slightly yellowish color. Eh, no, we won't. Never mind. I lied. Well, <laughs> on the bottom one, let's do a different color. Let's do something crazy like. Um, green that, that looks good actually i like that a lot wow all right and then we'll just maybe bump up the brightness of this one up here a bit there we go all right that looks really really nice now uh, something that we can do to take this a step even uh further is we can go ahead and copy and paste a bunch of different motion keyframes on these so i'm going i'm gonna go ahead and do that by uh dragging my window into two by putting my cursor in the top left and just clicking and dragging until it splits into two um hit, hit this little button up here and then we're gonna go on down to <coughs> excuse me we're gonna go on down to um, the graph editor, and for all of these, they're going to need an, they're going to need a uh, rotation and a location keyframe. So I'm hit uh, I location I rotation. Now, when we open all these up, you can see that we have a lot of things uh, potentially going on here, which is fine. Which is fine. We we'll just take a little bit of time doing it. Um, we're going to open this up, this little button here, and go to modifiers. Hit add modifier and change this to noise. Now, when we go ahead and and put our our scene frame rate in the second tab here to 60 frames and then play this you can see that it most definitely indeed is using this little noise right here to move around i'm going to change the scale up the scale to approximately maybe the 30 like that and turn the strength down to 0.2 not even 0.2 probably 0.1 honestly um so yeah it looks nice i like that quite a bit now we're going to hit this little button up at the top here Copy that and then move on down to the next one, down to the next one, like that. And then the cool thing about this is, is that we're just going to offset it. So it's not moving on the same exact plane as the previous location keyframe. Um, so there we go. So we have that now. It's kind of moving around, which looks really good. And then we also have the rotation for it, which um, I can also just really just copy and paste the same values, which is pretty cool. So we have this little paste button again. We'll change the offset a little bit so it's not exactly the same. And there we go. Now we have a rotating uh, letter, which looks really, really, really cool. So that is essentially all that you need to do to get this kind of thing done. So let's go ahead and just do this real quickly. just like a little speed run, you know, and we'll just put all these through. Um, the great thing about doing art that's similar to this or, or, or some type of digital art or some type of 3D art, whether it's, you know, like I said, whether it's 2D, 3D, whatever, digital um even even traditional art, really, it all works the same way. The, the, the best thing about this is that we have so much freedom. And a lot of the times in digital art or in some form of art, there's a lot of things you don't really have the freedom over, um, whether it's because you're you know doing a more realistic piece or a, a portrait of someone that actually exists and you're trying to make it accurate. The great thing about art that's like this is that we have the ability to be able to go, hey, I want this to look exactly like this and nothing's going to stop me from being able to do that, um, which is really, really, really cool. So I hope that after watching this video or, um, or watching any videos for that matter, you uh, take that into account in the next project that you're doing. And I, I'm... I'm very, very, very happy to continue to be able to do these kind of videos because, like I said, I this is my favorite thing to make in Blender is these these kind of videos where uh, these kind of pieces of art where it's like um, extremely, uh, extremely loose. Like this looks so loose and comfortable, and I just I, I love that that dynamic a lot. Um, so that is something really, really, very, really, very cool. I think one of these offsets is a little strange and it's kind of going in coordination with another one, and I don't like that. So let's go ahead and see if I can maybe get it the heck out of here. All right, that looks a little bit better. All right, nice. So I don't think I'm going to do the rest of these um, on camera because they're just so tedious. So I'm going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I've done the animation for all of the letters here. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. I think it looks, it looks so cool. I'm going to turn the shadow off for wait no i'm not i just lied to you all um <laughs> i don't really want to do that because i i really enjoy the 
the shadows on everything. So I think what we're going to have to do is just change the angle of this a little bit. Just just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. All right, cool. I think that looks... You know what? I kind of like the shadows a little bit. Honestly, I, what am I thinking? We're going to turn bloom on. And what are we going to do with bloom is we're going to turn the threshold down a little bit. The radius up and the intensity up. Now, the problem is, is that we don't really have anything that's too bright in the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our lamp here and I just make it a little smaller. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have a nice little uh, blooming effect going on, which is which looks really, really uh, nice. And I like quite a bit. We can change the bloom color to uh, various different colors. I think I'm going to make it actually this light bluish color like that, which looks really, really nice. So I think, oh, that looks really, really nice. I really, really want to do a little bit of something extra here. So I kind of want to have these bad boys kind of pop up um, and do a nice little animation. But the way to do that is... Um, we're going to we're going to have to go ahead and add in some um, some empties. So what we're going to do is I'm hit shift A and we're going to search for empty and then plain axis. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these in similar in a similar spot, probably actually behind each of these um, behind each of these letters. So hit three to look at the to, to see how far it is behind there. Hit one to go into the front facing um, view. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit shift D and just pop one of these behind each of these letters so it's okay that we didn't do this before um because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and hold down ind individually I'm, I'm gonna grab the letter then hold down shift and select the plane and then hit control p set parent to so same thing with all of these letters i'm gonna grab a and do the same thing with this one and then this same thing with this one and then this same thing with this and so on and so forth all the way um all the way down so grab that nope not that there we go. Control P. Grab this. Control P. And this. Control P. Now we move one of the axes. As you can see that the letter itself will move or it should unless we've done something completely wrong, which I do not doubt. So let's go ahead. And now we have the ability to animate these uh, empties without having to worry about messing up the um, animation that we currently have on um on the text itself so let's go ahead and uh i feel as if for all of these we'll hold on shift and we'll just offset the values hold on shift select all of them and then i'm frame 110 i'm gonna hit uh location and then i'm frame 120 i'm gonna hit um gz to move them down a little bit actually wait yeah gz to move them down a little bit and then location and then we can go ahead and grab this uh, 110 frame, hit Shift D, and move it up to like 160 or something. Um, okay, nice. Uh, and with this first keyframe, I'm going to go ahead and drop it way down like here. And then hit I, location. And then we can just, there we go. So now that looks really, really nice. Um, cool. But we need to separate them. So they're, they're all going at the same time. So we can fix this by going ahead and selecting each one of these bad boys at the same time. So let's go ahead and grab the second one here. Double tap A or drag a box over top of it and just hit G to move it over like three times. Um, what the heck? Okay, I can't, gra I can't grab this third one. There we go. Okay, nice. So we're going to go ahead and actually wait. We'll do this not by threes, but we'll by five increments. So it'll just be a lot easier. So you see here on the, um, the map here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So all, every, every fifth, um, every fifth frame i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and just push it up by by one there for you nice and then this we're gonna go ahead and hit this and then this and then wait what was the last okay all right um 120 so this one's just start on 125 not 130 nice and the same thing with this 130 same thing with this who is this good cowboy all right um let's go ahead and ooh, wait uh, 130. So this will be 135. Move it up by five frames. So like I said, the, the the I'm moving each of these behind by five keyframes. So this will be 140 because the last one was on 135, and this will be 145. So you can see when we it, when we actually play this now, you can see that all the letters come up individually, and they look very very cool. So nice. Um, I really like the, I like the snappiness of it. I don't. I I really do. Um, kind of want. 
Okay, so I have moved all of the uh, letters to their correct positions, and now they zoom up, and then so they come to a stop, which is very, very nice. So I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to select all of these, and we're going to move them all over by a little bit. So let's see if we can just hit C here to... Uh, we can't do that. Okay, we'll just hold down Shift and select all of them by hand. That's completely fine. And then I want to move this over. So let's go ahead and just do this. And it kind of happens at the beginning of the thing, which is really nice. So there we go. Nice. Um, I really want to do something weird with the camera here. So location, and then on frame 80, we'll have another location. Move the camera downwards a little bit, like that. And then had his OG show, like this. Nice tutorial, boom, big show title, like, wow, nice, cool. Then um, we can go ahead and play. You can see, oh, I did not add that keyframe. <laughs> Hit uh, insert uh, location, and then when we play it, you can see it kind of moves up with it, which looks so cool. That's nice. All right, now, um, that is uh, basically it for today's uh, tutorial. I want to make the background a color because right now it's just solid white. So let's go ahead and, you know, do a little bit of that in there. And can this actually be a specular roughness? Okay, cool, nice. Now, once that is uh, once that is completed, that is basically our text, uh, our cool 3D text type effect that you guys seem to love, which I'm glad about because I also love this type of thing. So, um, like I said, I hope you, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.